Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the new updates to Tablet Pro Studio 6.1, 6.0, uh, and some of the ones coming up shortly. So this should be out um, very soon. We're going to go through this list. Uh, stored last two radio actions for I and I faster loading. Let me show off just this feature in general. Uh, we made a little widget right here. You can see this stores now. So let's tap on the screen. You'll see we have the erase and we have the blue pen. Now, when I click the front button, I can go back and forth between erasing and writing and I can see it all in this space right next to my pen. Uh, I absolutely love this feature. This is something that I've been trying to figure out how do we do this for a long time. Uh, in order to map these, all you do is open up the radio menu, select an item from the outside circle, and then select a second one, and it'll toggle back and forth between these. You're not going to be able to see this very easily, uh, but there you go. Uh, we've also set it so that when you switch to another app, it remembers what those shortcuts were. Uh, there is a little problem here we have to work on. You need to wait sometimes. I will right, we'll open up the radio first. This seems to make it work just fine. Okay, now I'm erasing and drawing, and I can see what those keyboard shortcuts are immediately. And if I change them, it's very fast to go back and forth and see what action I'm triggering. Okay, I love this. It's really nice. All right, let's go back to our change log. Uh, improve background to the last radio two actions. That's the background behind. Um, paste image support for BMP. Uh, all right. So one thing that a lot of people don't realize that the radio menu can do is it can paste images and files. Uh, but primarily images is what we're focusing on. Okay, so let's open up the radio menu. Let's change this little icon here, this one. Right, click in the top right. This will bring up the editor. Uh, we are going to change the select icon to paste an image. Now if we go here, we can go to Smart Shortcuts. This has been renamed paste image. Let's find an image we're going to uh, open up images and drawing program logos. I want to paste a OneNote logo inside of OneNote because everybody does. It's the cool thing to do. Okay, so we're going to drag this right on top of here. You should be able to drag this anywhere on top. It'll paste the path right here and let's click apply. Notice OneNote new PNG is now our um, tooltip, OneNote PNG, see the PNG, or see the tooltips here at the top. We're going to click on it and we have the image. The image is large. If you want to paste a smaller image, then save a smaller image and you can do that. But look how cool that is. That's awesome. Uh, we like this. Oh, I pasted it again because that was in the clipboard. Okay, let's go here. Uh, all right, paste image now supports BMP alpha channel. That means that we were able to paste a um, PNG with transparency. We updated a whole bunch of different text. So these uh, help information here, these are all um, better uh, written, so you understand what's what these things do better. Uh, I added something here. Right now, you can see default text and default. Uh, there was a keyboard shortcut that didn't work quite right in the past. It's a win plus shift. Now over here, text tools. This is going to switch between uh, two, two presets of the same size. What it's really doing is it's switching between the tagged presets here. This is a little bit complicated, but for those who understand the program, you'll, you'll get why this is so cool. Okay, so default. If we go up to program profile, default profile which has been renamed for clarity instead of default preset, it is default profile. Right here, tags for custom preset 
file list. The word default will put any file that has the word default in it into this list. So notice here we have our, our list of presets. My system's being a little laggy here. All right, so we have up here we have default and default I and I. Both of these are going to show up in the little drop down arrow next to the browse folder. So here you can see default text and default. So the keyboard shortcut win plus space will now switch between those ones that are in that list. Now I'm in OneNote, so this is switching between all the different OneNote presets. You can see I can go through all of these. So if you want to use just a slim artist pad, you hate the large one and the medium one's too big just by a little bit, then this will allow you to switch between different uh, artist pads of the same size. This is great if you like a certain size, um, but you do different things in the same program. Let's say you are in Blender and you all want to sculpt in with one preset and then you want to do another preset that's specific for uh, using the grease pencil or doing um, uh, 3D uh, modeling, then this will work well for you. Okay, let's look at the next item here. Uh, there is now a generic 3D profile, so if you're looking for one uh, in this list, there is a 3D base template Ionite right here. So you can select that and it will um, be a, a good guideline. Now the reason that one exists uh, when you're doing anything that uses a, a lot of holding down buttons is best to have them on the right side so here, if we were inside of Blender, we're not going to go in Blender right now. We've been working on making the auto switching work a lot better, and it and it does. Uh, <laughs> it switches um, very quickly, and sometimes I don't want it to. Okay, so if we're inside of Blender, We have on the left side, the very left side, these are all buttons we're going to tap. This is our right click button, our undo, redo, and then our add button. We're not holding these down. The buttons that are right next to the side of the screen, all the way left, these tend to conflict a little bit with edge swipe inside of Windows 10 and 11. So it's best to put buttons you hold down closer to the right. So these ones, all of these ones, when we hold these down, we're, got, we're not going to have the same conflict uh, as if we were all the way to the left. On the left, it's a little tricky. So our default, our 3D base template, that one should help accommodate. So people who start building don't get um, lost with that. Uh, let's see. Legacy editor and file menu for easy reference. There's a reason that we don't have the legacy editor uh, easily accessible. Uh, this does take a bit more learning in order to use it. A lot more explanation and I, I wanted this to start out by being easy. Here inside the legacy editor, you saw how I opened it right in the file or the edit menu. You can go in here and you can resize things and reposition them. Uh, we don't want to do that right now. But you can get to it easier than you did before. So if I have to reference how to do it in the future, you can just go to File to Edit and Open Legacy Editor here. You can also do it with this little button next to Advanced. Uh, we did rename inside of the Radio Editor this drop down, this option Smart Shortcuts. This is now called Smart Shortcuts uh, before it was called uh, Stylus Quick Input Options or something like that. Uh, number of bug fixes, I'll let you read 
through those if you want. A number of things were renamed. Uh, we're working on uh, fixing the theme so that they can see the license information better. Uh, the updated GUI for color picking actions. This is something that I'm, I'm very happy and pleased with. Uh, it's a little silly, probably, uh, but in the past when you clicked here and then you went to select a color, uh, it was misaligned, it didn't look nice. Uh, this looks nice and sexy now. So that's uh, the most important thing. <laughs> All right, there's now an advanced radial menu option. This is for one button stylus. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so let's go to the home page. We have radial menu. We have it set to last. We're going to change this to advanced. Now advanced, what that means is that when I um, tap on the button and I tap the screen, I'm holding the button down. If I'm holding the button down and I tap on the screen, it will open up the radial menu. The radial menu, I can then um, select my last two actions. So let's pick one and five, which it already was. Now, if I'm not tap, if I'm not holding the button down while I tap the screen, I'll toggle back and forth between erasing and drawing, which is great. I want to open the radio menu. Just hold the button and tap it on the screen, and I can remap those things. So now it's two and four, and I can um, do those actions easily. Okay, so that's great because in the past you would need a two button stylus and the uh, surface pen, surface slim pen to all of those ones are a single button stylus. Uh, I would like to point out that that option is only available for the, um, the barrel button um, because that's the only button on a single button stylus. And it works better if you have it on invert and barrel and there was a couple other conflicts. Okay, full screen trackpad mode. This is really cool. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the desktop. This should toggle over here to the default shortly. Um, I'm impatient. There's usually a 10 second delay there. All right, by the way, this is key press OSD that shows the keyboard shortcuts in these videos. Um, highly recommend it for a lot of different things. Okay, so now down here on the far left, in this little square, this is the full screen trackpad. This button has existed here for a while. We click on it. Now the screen has turned into a full screen trackpad. And that's great and wonderful, but how do you get out of it? In the past, this required um, tapping an invisible area over here on the right. You can see this little mouse icon. We can go back and forth quickly between having it open and closed. That's okay, but uh, I want to go back to having the buttons on the side. These were useful to me, so how do I do that? Now if you tap on the screen with four fingers, it'll revert back to having the last open uh, mode. So in this case, this is a slim mode. Uh, notice our tooltip here is full screen trackpad, four finger tap to close, so it gives that information right there. You can use the trackpad, do mouse type actions, mouse type selections, uh, and then tap with four fingers to revert. Uh, I like this. Um, there are certain things inside the studio that were difficult to go back and forth in between, and that's one of the things I'm trying uh, to improve in these new versions. Uh, by the way, this also works with the radial menu. Uh, let's, we should probably change this off advanced mode. Let's put this back to last. Perfect. And let's go right here back to default. Okay, so now if you click here, activate mouse mode, uh, this does the same thing. It brings up the full screen trackpad. If you tap with four fingers, you're going to go back. You're going to exit that mode. You can also click on activate mouse mode. If you click and open the radial menu again, opening the radial menu will also exit out of full screen mode. We wanted to make this uh, really easy to not get stuck in full screen mode. 
In our last update, we also added this switch to pen position after one minute, five minutes on preset switch or never. Uh, what this means is that when you're using the radio menu, if you open it up and you drag it out of the way, you want it to continue to open up in that location. It will remember that location until you update uh, the preset to a new preset after five minutes or after one minute, or it always stays there from now on. So this is a nice welcome change. We've made improvements to the voice command panel to make this easier to use. If you want to use your voice to trigger anything from the artist pad over here on the left, you can do that very quickly by clicking on import touch. Now all of these shorthands, all of these words here, you can say undo and it will send undo, but you'll need to map uh, in the here instead of Cortana, you would want to set this to open up the voice command here, which all you have to do is add shift to win shift H and it will open up voice command instead of Cortana. We have a handful more changes for you to look over. Feel free to ask questions about those uh, in the general chat here in Discord. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you like these changes and you appreciate the work that Marius, Takashi, and I are doing, then please rate us up in the Microsoft Store. That's the easiest way to say thank you. We've had a couple low ratings, um, which happens, unfortunately, more often than I hope for. So uh, please help rate us up in the store. All right, thank you. Have a wonderful day and stay creative.